Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'll be covering the Bakhmut as well as Avdivka and Zaporizhia fronts. So starting out in the Zaporizhia front, we see here that uh, Russian forces are reporting a offensive by the Ukrainians in this part of the front line. And this is according to Wargon. So the Russian forces are reporting that the Ukrainians attacked in the direction of uh, Polohoi, which is this village here to the south of Uliaipole. So essentially what they're reporting is that the Ukrainians are attacking this area with a small force as a preparation for their large-scale offensive, or that is very least what they are wanting the Russians to think, is what work on so reports. So this is very interesting because Polohi is, as you can see, very far behind the actual front line. And according to the initial reports by this war correspondent, who is actually right there in the Saporizhia front, and he's sitting here with some other uh, guys, I'm thinking these are soldiers. So essentially what this guy says is that the Ukrainians retreated after the battle, with a lot of losses, including some taken capture and four to five tanks destroyed. So four to five tanks destroyed is not a lot, which means that this was most likely a probing force. So that must indicate that it is very close to the front line that the fighting happened. So most likely somewhere around Mirne, which is isolated from the rest of the villages, or Trushenka, which is very close to Holyaipole. Most likely not this area here, as there is a very large contestion of villages, which would make it very difficult for any forces to be effective in this area, unless it is a large force. So essentially we're seeing some fighting by Drushnyanka and Mirne, and the, the, it ended with the Russians pushing them back after the Ukrainians did some sort of probing attack. Then we move on to the Avdivka front, where here the Russian forces have managed to capture the final part of Krasnohorivka, this forest patches here to the west of the village, as well as the road leading up to them, and these to the south of it. And at the same time, we see the Russian forces actually advancing here to the east of Kamyanka. So if we look at the recap map, we can see here that the Russian forces captured this part here, and to the east, they captured this part here, which includes this part, which is this small area here, which could be some sort of fortified position. I'm not exactly sure from the satellite images. And then we see here, of course, this is all from prior to the invasion beginning. And there's these fortified trench networks to the east of Kamyanka, which is most likely where the Ukrainian positions are located as they are trying to push back the Russian advance from three directions. The Russians are trying to advance from the south, east and north of the village and is now trying to completely encircle the village by taking the road here to the west of it as well as advancing to the south of it, which would cut it off from anything and everything. Then we move on to the Bakhmut front, where there here is a lot of updates, both to the north and the south of the city. If we look at the north of the city, we see here to the northwest, in the direction of Romove, the Russian forces have significantly advanced within this forest line here to the northwest of the city, and are now in essentially in full control over it, leaving only Romove, which is cut off due to the bridge here between the two sides, being blown up a couple of weeks ago. So the Ukrainian forces, if there are any in Romove, have now uh, been isolated because the Russian forces have control over or fire control over the road. And they have also taken control over the forest line, which leaves only Romove alone and isolated. Then to the south of the city, we see here that the Russian forces have managed to capture the southern part of the city where they have managed to after isolating them from the northern part the ukrainians then retreated to the northern part so that they wouldn't get encircled and then the russian forces captured this territory so essentially what they're doing is that they're trying to squeeze the ukrainian forces to one place and then take up 
they left our behind territory, which will allow them to essentially take territory with little to no casualties as the Ukrainians are just retreating from these positions. And at the same time, we're seeing advances to both to the north and the south of these rail lines, which could indicate that they are trying to isolate the city into two by the rail lines, splitting it into the eastern part and the western part. And this is very interesting because we are seeing two different brigades uh, operating within the eastern and western parts of the city. So this is actually something that could happen. And at the same time, we are seeing some advances within the Assam steel plant, which could indicate further that the Russian forces are trying to split it into two. So I thought it would be interesting to see what each side actually controls of the city. So I mapped out the parts that the Ukrainians have control of, including Homove, and the parts the Russians have control of, including uh, Yahidne. So essentially we see here the Ukrainian forces have control of about 15 square kilometers of the city, while the Russian forces have control of about 29.5 square kilometers of the city. This essentially means the Russian forces control two thirds of the city, while the Ukrainian forces control one third of it. While at the same time, we can see that some parts that the Russian forces control are more open fields, forest lines, and so on, while the Ukrainian forces essentially only control residential areas. So although the Russian forces control more of the city, the Ukrainian forces still control the most significant parts, including the center as well as the steel plant and this residential area to the west, which will most likely see the toughest battles of the Battle of Bakhmut. Now let's take a minute to talk about the perspectives of this battle. We see here the Pentagon chief claims that the decision whether or not to leave Bakhmut will be taken by Ukrainian President Zelensky. According to him, the possible withdrawal of the unit of the Ukrainian armed forces from the city would not mean the defeat of Kiev. Meanwhile, Wagner chief Prigozhin has repeatedly asked Zelensky to send combat-ready military units to the meat grinder. And at the same time, Zelensky has said that the decision to send more troops and keep supplying and keep fighting in Bakhmut is a tactical one, as the fall of Bakhmut, according to Zelensky, and according to him, allegedly also Selushny and the top brass of the Ukrainian military, is that the fall of Bakhmut would essentially mean the Russian forces reaching the slovyansk kramatorsk line. And this makes sense, considering the only thing between Bakhmut and this line is Chesov Yar. And as I've mentioned before, the slovyansk konstantinivka line, which is this one here, is the final defensive line in the Donetsk region. And I say that because this whole line here to the west and all of this beyond, it essentially it becomes useless once the Russian forces break through this defensive line, as this is much more fortified, much better supplied, and everything is just much better for this defensive line than any other line. And at the same time, this area is still very heavily populated as well as industrialized compared to the western part and everything else to the west and northwest of the Donetsk region itself. So essentially, the fall of Bakhmut is a domino piece that is going to fall down and it is going to essentially start a domino effect that would mean the collapse of the Donetsk region. This is why the Battle of Bakhmut is so significant, both tactically and strategically, no matter how much different medias want to convince you it is not. And this is also how my whole channel is built on this specific battle. So essentially, Bakhmut is tactically and strategically important to me, as it has made me grow into the YouTube channel that I am today. And that is going to be all for this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.